Okay, so I'm in the middle of making uh, one of our family's traditional Christmas treats. And I am not a great baker and I definitely have not made any cooking videos before. I mean, how to mix up fire cider, I don't think counts, but <laughs> um, <clears throat> I wanted to try. I wanna try, um, not a lot of people make these and they require a specialized iron and so I think people are kind of intimidated by them and but they're easy and fun and delightful so let's give it a go. So um, I first I think this goes, I tell you where the recipe came from. So our family is gluten free. These are gluten free. They can, they are not dairy free and they're not egg free. They can be made dairy free. Um, I have done that before but it's there, it's a little bit tricky because of the texture that you need. You use coconut oil and the texture that you need the coconut oil to be. Um, it requires some playing around with, so just know that if you substitute in coconut oil for butter, that you're gonna need to play with it a little bit. And I am using a recipe, I've tried a bunch of different ones. This one's my favorite. It's from a blog called Gluten Free Baking and it's just called Gluten-Free Pizzelles Thin and Crisp. I'll link it below. So let's, um, I'm, I've already made one batch, so my kitchen's already a mess, but it is what it is. <laughs> and um, I am learning and, you know, I, it, doing these videos is helping me learn to just show how it really is. It doesn't need to be perfect, right? So, uh, Let's take a, let me show you what the ingredients are. Okay, so there aren't a lot of ingredients. Um, so Bob's Red Mill gluten-free baking flour is what she calls for. I'm using the Bob's one-to-one, -one. it's what I have. It really isn't necessary, but it's what I have in my pantry right now. You can use the regular gluten-free flour. In this case, it works just fine. Um, the next thing is granulated sugar. I picked up this organic cane sugar at Costco, we don't use a lot of sugar in our house and I more often, and but I, so I've used the organic coconut sugar and it works great just when we're making them for friends and neighbors. Um, th this is quite expensive in comparison. And so, and it's fine to have, you know, it's a special treat for a holiday. Um, okay, it calls for baking powder. I have no idea why. Uh, they're not baked. They don't rise, <laughs> but it calls for it, so I put it in. I'm not messing with it. I don't know. Um, vanilla. You can also use anise or peppermint. I've actually made them in all kinds of flavors, but my favorite, all, like across the board, our favorite is vanilla, so I just use regular old vanilla extract. You can use any kind of extract. Um, almond is really good. Anise is traditional. And then butter. Oh, and eggs <laughs> so those are oh and then powdered sugar if you want at the end okay those are the ingredients I will link to the recipe below okay so here's the dry ingredients it's one and three-fourths cups gluten-free flour again I'm using the one-to-one -one. the recipe calls for the original gluten-free I've used both it doesn't seem to make a difference um, three-fourths cup granulated sugar and two teaspoons baking powder so I'm just gonna mix those up okay the next step are the wet ingredients the first thing is is it calls for butter that has been softened but not melted so you can leave it on your counter but I make so many batches that I forget to leave out butter for that that much butter and so I do microwave it all microwaves are different <laughs> I have a brand new microwave uh, and I don't think it's the same as my last one but uh, 30 seconds at half power gives me the right consistency. This is, you know, what you're looking for. Basically, slightly softer than room temperature is what I'm looking for. Next, we're doing eggs. We are using our eggs from our, uh, from our chickens. So I'm going to put them in. Um, like always, I'm going to uh, only crack them one at a time and then add them to the butter one at a time. Okay. 
And we do that just to make sure that it, just in case we have a bad egg, pretty confident that these eggs are good, but it, this is just a good practice when you have farm fresh eggs to just crack them one at a time into something before you add them to your other ingredients, just in case there is something wrong with one of the eggs, you don't ruin your other ingredients. Okay, here's the wet ingredients. It's three eggs, a softened butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla or whatever other extract that you're gonna use. If you're gonna use a different extract, you may not need a teaspoon, particularly if it's something really strong like anise or peppermint. So you'll have to just um, play around with that. And I'm going to mix that up, but I can't do that and hold my camera. So let me do that off Okay, camera. and this is what you're gonna be looking for. I mix it pretty vigorously but the butter is still going to be separated from the egg. Um, and that is all the liquid that goes in there. There's no milk, there's no, there's no water, there's nothing else. And I'm going to add that to the center so you can really see the texture now that I add it. And where's my wooden spoon? I thought I had everything out. Let's Let me see go. if I can at least get this started on camera. I am going to have to switch to my hands and you'll see this is a starts out as a really dry batter. You'll be mixing and this is pretty common in my experience in gluten free batters is that they're they seem dry. They I don't know if it takes longer for the flour to hydrate. Like I said, I'm not a baker. I don't know about these things, but you can see it's looking pretty dry. So at this point, I'm going to mix to using to using my hands. Um, let's see, I think I can start on camera. I might have to switch off. We'll see. It also might just get boring. It takes a minute, <laughs> but um, it starts to get, this batter changes as you make it. My sister asked me uh, for my recipe and I sent her my recipe. And then as I'm making them, I thought, if you had never made something gluten-free, this, might be kind of frustrating. And this batter will kind of change depending on how big your eggs are, especially if you're using farm fresh eggs. Um, you can see it's really sticky right now, like sticking to my hands a lot. Uh, my last one wasn't this sticky, my last batch. It kind of changes depending on uh, how big the eggs are. Uh, although it doesn't seem to matter too much. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera off and really get at this properly. Okay, after just a minute or so of mixing it with my hands, you can see it comes together into like a cohesive dough, um, all of the dry ingredients. This particular batch is a little stickier than normal, um, and I'll show you the last one that I made that just a few minutes ago wasn't this sticky. It really does just have to do with how big my eggs are. It would probably be more consistent if I was using grated eggs. Uh, so I, I like to let it sit just for like a couple of minutes. I've done that, I let it sit for a few minutes and now we're ready to put them on the iron. So this is what a Pizzell iron looks like. This one is made by Cucina Pro and I will, um, I bought it on Amazon. I will see if it's still available. I've had it for many years or I'll link something similar. It has a snowflake pattern and it makes two, oh, it's hot. <laughs> It makes two, two cookies at a time, um, and I use a standard cookie scoop, uh, but slightly underfilled for this. And let me show you back over here. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. So that's a little too much. So slightly underfilled, and then back or, and then I put it to the back of center. This recipe says, it's hard to tell on camera, I actually have to look at, not, oh, out of my viewfinder to see, make sure it's like enough, it's the right amount, but it's slightly underfilled. I put it a little back from center. And then this is the trick. <laughs> I don't, you don't have to do these with regular ones. Um, let it sit for a minute and soften up the butter a little bit more just for about that long. And now I'm gonna squish it and lock them. Ugh. You do need to lock that thing in place. And then I have a little timer and I cook them for 90 seconds. 
while those are cooking. This recipe says that it will make 30 pizzelles. That is not true in my experience. It makes 16 and I consistently get 16 cookies out of this recipe. I don't double it um, because the batter is sort of difficult to, to work with I, and it doesn't take very long to mix up. I just make single uh, single batches. I don't see there's any reason why you couldn't if you wanted to do it that way or if you wanted to mix them in like a, a KitchenAid or something like that. It's just not how I do it. Um, usually my boys are here with me and somebody's making a thing of batter while we're cooking the other ones. There's the timer. Okay, and I unlock that. And there they are. They Now, the a new iron is not gonna be seasoned like this. Mine doesn't need to be sprayed anymore. Um, I usually spray it once for good measure and then I don't need to anymore. And you pull them off and I just, my depth perception isn't that great. And I'm gonna move them over to a cooling rack. And you let them cool. You can form them into shapes over something we don't, we just lay them flat. And you can see this is the last bat. Uh, notice that these are a little bit browner. Um, we sometimes like them like that. In a humid climate like ours, these are crispy right now. In fact, let me break one to show you. This one's cool and dry and it's crispy, uh, but they will not stay crispy. They turn into this like lovely, like thin sugar cookie type cookie in just about an hour or two. So if you want a crispy one, you have to eat it right out of the oven. And we find that if we cook them for an extra about 20 to 30 seconds, they turn this brown color and they'll stay crispy just a bit longer. So we sometimes do that. Okay, and so once you've got a bunch made, um, we, we stack them up like this as they cool off. And then I'm gonna, um, I have confectioner sugar in here. Remember to check your confectioner sugar if you're cooking for gluten-free because confectioner sugar is made with cornstarch and is not necessarily gluten-free. So check your confectioner sugar to make sure it's marked gluten-free. And um, last night I was in a Zoom with a group of women. Whoops, <laughs> I'm watching through the viewfinder. Let me not watch through the viewfinder. There we go, there we go. And one of the women gave as a gift a little, um, like an icing duster. I thought, oh, I could probably use one of those. I am definitely not a kitchen gadget person, but um, if there's something that I use, that I'm gonna use like a lot once a year, I'd put it in with my with my Pazelle iron and to just for that one purpose. But you just add a little bit of snow on top of the snowflake. And we we'll just do this to I'll do this to all of them. Okay, so we then package the Pazelles up by the half dozen. And that's how we gift them is in little cellophane bags. Um, I hope that was fun or interesting, useful. I hope you try making pizzelles gluten-free or not. If you don't wanna make them gluten-free, there are lots of recipes. It is different. You don't cook them for as long and the batter looks different. So um, if you are planning on making them with regular flour, just know that it's gonna be a little bit different than this. Happy holidays, no matter what you're celebrating. I hope it's merry and bright and beautiful. And I will talk to you in the new year.